Hello everybody, my name is Hendrik and I'm happy to introduce another video of our series called Understand SAP EWM. The series where we try to help especially beginners in the area of SAP EWM to understand complex topics and functionalities. In the same way uh, professionals or advanced users might get some ideas and some concepts that could help you to explain these functionalities and features to, to others in your project environment or in your daily work. This time we are talking about pick and pass and as usual we start with the example from our daily life and then we will look at the system process about the um, different components and we will also have a quick look about and in the uh, most important settings in the customizing and also how the process will work at the end. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you back um, once the content part is over. Have fun! As usual, we start with an example from the real world. You might remember one video where we were talking about the Sunday afternoon dinner with the whole family. Imagine the family, and so the table a little bit bigger now, and different kinds of dishes placed all over the table. Everybody wants his or her plate to be filled with samples from all of those dishes. But if everybody fills the plate by him or herself, it will be chaotic, having everybody running around the table. Usually we avoid this chaos intuitively, just by giving the plate or whatever you're using to place your food on to the person who is sitting in front of the pot with the respective dishes. This person will put some food on your plate and hand over to another person sitting in front of another dish. At the end, your plate has been filled by different family members sitting in different areas of the table without anybody having to walk around the whole table. So this is what we call pick and pass in the real world. You can probably imagine similar scenarios in your canteen or in big restaurant kitchens. I also remember times when it was like this in McDonald's, but the last time I visited the Big M it rather looked like consolidation of burgers, fries and drinks at the front desk. Okay, so I think you see where we're going with this. So let's jump into warehouse logistics now. Imagine a large warehouse where you must pick lots of orders with small quantities of many different products. These products are stored in different areas of the warehouse. Those areas, which we call zones in the following minutes, can or should not be served by the same resource. For instance, because the distance is too long or in the different zones you have to use different equipment. So now you have two options to execute the picking process. Option 1. Pick from the different zones into different pick HUs and consolidate those HUs at a work center in the packing or staging area. Option 2. First pick from one zone and then hand over to the next zone, so basically consolidate into one pick HU during picking already. This is what we call pick and pass in EWM. There are different factors or criteria to decide which way to go, but this decision process should not be part of this video. We will rather concentrate on how the second option works. Assume in our example, picking is done manually from a rack and the transfer between the different zones is enabled by a conveyor system. This is probably the most common approach, whereas the transfer can also be done by manual transport from the given endpoint to the next starting point. Before we investigate the system setups, we will describe the main components which are needed to conduct a pick and pass process in EWM. First of all, we have two different kind of warehouse orders. Normal warehouse orders for each zone, having the warehouse tasks assigned to them, and top warehouse orders, which group together all normal warehouse orders, which have been created for the different zones. And the pick HU, which has to pass from one zone to the next zone. As well as one activity area for each zone, having a start and end point, both are normal storage bins assigned to it, and one additional higher level activity area, which can be used as a bracket to join the other ones. Let us have a quick look at the most important point regarding the system setup. At first, we must create activity areas and join them. We assume that you know what an activity area is and how it can be set up. 
The only thing you need to do, apart from setting up one activity area for each zone, is to join and sort all those activity areas, which should be part of one pick and pass run later. In addition to this, we have to assign storage bins as start and end points for each activity area. And finally, we need a warehouse order creation rule, which supports the pick and pass process. The only difference to the normal warehouse order creation rule is that this rule makes sure to create a top warehouse order to join the warehouse orders for the different zones. We assume a system-driven approach here, which means that the sorting of the warehouse orders within the top warehouse order will be done according to the activity area sequence defined above. Later, during processing, only one of the sub-warehouse orders belonging to a top warehouse order will be in active status at any time. The picking process itself, from operator's perspective, is not different from picking non-joint warehouse orders. The only difference is a screen to hand over to the next zone, which will be displayed once all warehouse tasks for a given sub-warehouse order have been completed. Physically, this bin can either be a bin from which somebody manually picks up the HUs to transfer them to the next zone, or it is simply a conveyor to which the operator pushes the pick HU. The conveyor, respectively the MFS component of the solution, such as EWM MFS, will make use of the destination data, which is the start point of the activity area which comes in the next sequence, to communicate to the PLC level to route the HU through the conveyor system. This process continues until all sub-warehouse orders are completely picked and the pick HU is routed to the put-away bin of the next step in the given storage process, such as packing work center or staging area. Yes, that's it. And uh, I think it's not too complex to understand if you shrink it down to the very basic parts of the idea and the functionality. I hope you could take something out of the video. And if you want to learn more, you can check out the blog posts and the videos on our website or directly in this YouTube channel. Just subscribe and you will be notified. And please uh, understand that I will not be able to publish videos on a monthly or even weekly basis. They will come from time to time and you will be notified. Another thing is our Slack group. So if you want to discuss problems, issues that you have in your daily work, just join our Slack group. I will put an invite link just below this video. Yes, that's it for today. That's it for this video. And yeah, I hope to see you back next time when we publish the next one. Thanks and bye.